Welcome back. As Canada celebrates its 150th anniversary, Indigenous groups have been using the opportunity to shine a light on Canada's history of colonization. How can Muslim Canadians be allies to Indigenous peoples in their quest for justice? Joining me to discuss this is Dr. Abdullah Hakim Quick. Dr. Quick has worked with Indigenous communities in Inuvik in the Northwest Territories and in Iqaluit, Nunavut. He is a senior lecturer at the Islamic Institute of Toronto, head of the History Department of Al Maghrib Institute, and outreach coordinator for the Canadian Council of Imams. Welcome to the show, Dr. Abdullah. Recently, you took part in the National Day of Prayer uh, for Indigenous peoples across Canada, and uh, you you did that at the Islamic Institute of Toronto. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience? Basically, we understand that a call was made from the Turtle Lodge, which is one of the main centers of the indigenous leadership in Canada. And the call was made for a national prayer. And that is that uh, they were appealing to all faiths to pray to the Creator um, at 9 a.m. On, on August 6th, 6th, and it will go simultaneously across the country. So that this is a spiritual thing, you know, everybody praying to the Creator uh, to lift the oppression uh, off the First Nations, uh, the suicide, the alcoholism, you know, the crises that they find themselves in, you know, they're, they're, they're turning to the Creator. So we responded to that call, you know, as believers in God and in solidarity uh, with uh, the oppressed people, you know, from the First Nations. Uh, we responded along with people of different faith groups uh, right across the country. Now, Sunday morning is not usually a busy time at the mosque. What was, did you have a good turnout? We had about 60 people. Oh, wow. And okay. um, it was a good turnout. And, had people um, from different uh, walks of life in the Muslim community, mm. uh, so it was it was it was a really good gathering. Mm. You also had an indigenous uh, professor, Professor uh, Robert Lovelace from Queen's University, joining you. Um, what did he talk about at that gathering? What we did was um, we first had a breakfast, and then we did the prayer <clears throat> right at 9 a.m. Following that, we tried to do some consciousness building. Mm. Um, because not enough just to make the prayer, people should be educated. Because again, ignorance is one of the biggest obstacles to progress. Mm. So I did a lecture first on the Americas before Columbus. What was it like? What did the, the indigenous people have to face? And um, Professor Lovelace, he did a lecture, the Americas after Columbus. Mm. So they were able to get an you know, a, a overview uh, of the position that the First Nations had uh, in Canada, U U.S., Central America, and South America, Caribbean, what life was like. And then after Columbus came and the, the colonialism hit, genocide happened, um, what actually went on to the people, and then you know, what can we do today? Now, I understand that you've um, went up north to Inuvik in the Northwest Territories and also Iqaluit in Nunavut, and you've uh, um, met with the indig indigenous people, peoples there. Um, what, are, what are some of the takeaways that, that you've um, taken from your travels and from um, working with indigenous peoples? What we are recognizing is that um, the indigenous people have a natural closeness and affinity to Islam. And um, aside from the fact that it is important for us to give back to society, mm -hmm. if we have, then we should be giving to the have-nots. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, um, they have a natural closeness. Mm -hmm. Uh, to Muslims, and, and, and I was surprised to find uh, amongst the people of the North and also the um, First Nations people, um, the, the, what you could call the indigenous, you know, because you have, you know, this Indian word is not a good word. Columbus, you know, bumped into America on his way to India mm -hmm. and called the people Indians. Um, but you have the, the uh, Aboriginal nations, indigenous nations, uh, and then you have Métis, uh, sort of mixed, and then you have the Inuits of the North. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we find is that, you know, amongst all of the First Nations, uh, there were a number of groups that believed in one God, mm -hmm. where directly th there is um, clear monotheism. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's important for Muslims. Um, it's not the only reason why we assist people, but it is important for us to understand that Islam is not necessarily just a Middle East phenomena, mm. that it was here. And I found amongst the uh, Mi'kmaq nation, uh, they were the people who, were, who lived in Newfoundland when John Cabot you know, came 
in the early um, European explorers, uh, they found the Mi'kmaq. And amongst, in, in the Mi'kmaq writings, or the oral traditions now in writing of the elders, um, there is the concept of Niskem mm. as the creator. And I was surprised. The way they described Niskem, it was like the 99 names of Allah. Oh, wow. So it's almost the exact description that we have of the creator. Mm. So based on that and the fact that in the chapter of the B, verse 11, that Allah said he sent prophets and messengers to every nation and every tribe, mm -hmm. uh, that's Islam. So, so Muslims were already here. Mm. There was people who submitted to the creator already here in this part of the world. And they were living in a fitrah, or natural state. And you see that in the north, where they were able to um, make this adaption. It's an amazing story. Mm. Just think, 15,000, 20,000 years ago, people leaving Siberia, and now there's a land passage, and they cross into Alaska, and some go into the north, some go down the coast. They come into a continent and there's no human beings at all. This is like somebody landing on the planet Mars and you have to survive. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing story of um, adaption and you know, human um, ingenuity. What do you think that Muslims being recent immigrants to this continent, or, or many, of, many of us being recent immigrants to this continent, what do you think we can learn from First Nations and, and indigenous peoples? So what we can learn, you know, again, is the real history of this part of the world. Mm. Because we tend to live in a, a very limited concept. When we say the confederation of 150 years, mm. uh, which is important and we're thankful to be here. Mm. But this is 10 to 20,000 years people have been living here. Mm. And what we understand is that there's thriving societies, uh, even the, the confederation, what they call the Six Nations Confederation, uh, of the Iroquois. This is the basis of the Constitution of the United States. Mm. Um, the Anishinaabe uh, people, you know, here in this region, the Mississaugas, uh, the people who became the Mississaugas, they are the ones who basically lived in this area before we came. Mm. And when they would cross Lake Ontario and they would see trees standing up in the water, mm. Takaranto, they would call it, mm. which means the land, the place where the trees are standing up in the water. Hmm. So that's literally, the, that's where Toronto comes from. Okay? And um, they were the ones that controlled this territory. And the French took over, the British took over, and treaties were made. So there were treaties made with the indigenous people. And one of the bases of the treaties is, is that the people who take over are supposed to be custodians of the land. You know, they had a concept similar to the Islamic one that human beings are like Khalifa in the sense of you are custodian of God. You are representative of God. You don't own land. You take care of the land because we don't stay here. We live and we die. Mm. So we're custodians of the land. So this concept of I own this piece of land is not in, in, in their thinking. They gave over the territory because they were dying from disease. 90% of their population died from from TB, tuberculosis, and smallpox, and other diseases that the Europeans brought. So they had to survive. And it's okay, you take over now. You be the custodians. And now the pollution is happening and the destruction is happening. It's like the treaties are being broken. And even the territory that's supposed to be given back to them after a period of time, or that they never even surrendered, um, they don't have control over. Mm -hmm. And there are some First Nations who never signed treaties. Right? But they don't control their own land. Mm. So the reality is, when, when, when you buy a house here in Toronto, the fact that you can buy a house is based on the treaty, mm. on the fact that they gave to the Confederation of Canada the rights to deal in this land. And, and that's what a lot of people don't recognize. And how would you recommend for Muslims to get involved in uh, indigenous issues and to be allies to indigenous peoples? Again, it's important to us when we look at the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he spoke about the fact that in, in, when he was young, in the early days in Mecca, there was a war going on between major tribes. He participated. He didn't fight, but he, but he did participate. And they, they made a, an alliance, Hilf al fadul And this was an alliance to fight oppression, to fight exploitation. And when the Prophet was asked during his prophethood, what do you think about this? He said, if, I, if that happened now, I would join it. So what he was saying is that if there is a struggle, 
um, to help the indigenous people uh, in terms of oppression. Because if you go to some of the reservations, you find that it's worse than third world countries. Mm -hmm. They don't have proper water. They don't have proper sanitation. Then it's important for us to lift up our voice along with other people that they should have rights in Canada like everybody else has the rights of Canada. Um, secondly, from our sadaqa, uh, our charity, and our zakat, this is our charity that we give every year, we need to give some, you know, some, you know, to solid projects supporting the First Nations, whether it be, you know, meals, education, uh, clean water. Uh, there's a number of groups now uh, in the Metro uh, Toronto area that are actually getting involved. A and these are important projects. We're not just talking about superficial things. Mm. And we need to share information, bring in First Nation indigenous teachers so that our children and our community can know the real history of this country and also share information. So this is important for us uh, at this point in time. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Abdullah. Hey YouTube, we hope you benefited from this video. If you liked it, or if you didn't, let us know in the comments below. And if you're interested in learning more, check out some of our other videos. And don't forget to subscribe so you can get new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.